Right, we're going to look at Acts 16, 1 to 15 for this coming Sunday. Uh, and uh, those of you at last night's workshop, um, just to recap, um, and I will post that handout um, with this video. Um, the Acts 1 tells us that um, really we're reading the Acts of Jesus, not so much the Acts of the Apostles, though they are active, um, Jesus' followers, but it's what Jesus is doing through the Apostles. And what's he doing? Verse uh, 8 of chapter 1, um, there will be witnesses, they will testify about Jesus, what they've seen and heard about him to the ends of the earth to people around so that everyone might know the salvation that comes through faith through hearing they might believe in trust in jesus and um in chapter 15 the chapter just before chapter 16 of course there is a question which has arisen from the chapters just running up to it about whether gentiles need to become jews to become christians and the answer is no and this invites the gospel to go out to the gentile world um beyond um beyond where it had been already. So let's get into it. So verse 1 of chapter 16. And I've given this the heading, going back to strengthen churches at some cost. Dot, dot, dot. So Paul comes, uh, they came to Der this place, Derby, Lystra. This is in Turkey. Worth getting a map out for this. You'll see a map in the back of the um, church Bible. And um, or drawing this, drawing this and seeing where they're going. They're going through modern, what we call Turkey. And uh, they meet a guy called Timothy. He, he is uh, he, he's an example of the issue of chapter 15, really. He's got a Jewish mother, but actually he's got a, a, a Gentile, non-Jewish non father. And um, he's a believer. He's a believer, um, sort of a mixed sort of belief heritage. And uh, verse 2, um, at Lystra, this is where they meet Timothy and Oconium. The, the believers, the Christians there, um, speak well of him. He's a, he's a great guy. Yeah, he, he's got potential. He, he he'll help with the, the you know he's got he's got gifts that will really help um, the church. And um, yeah, in terms of in terms of taking the gospel out, so, so Paul wants to take him because of that, takes him on the journey, and so um, he circumcised him not because um, of keeping the law, not to make him a Jew because we already had that in chapter fifteen. They don't have to be a Jew, but because the Jews who lived in the area. They all knew his father was a Greek. There's a question uh, for some of the Jews saying, well, can we really trust to listen to this guy? Is this guy really kosher? And that's why. So it's not for salvation. Timothy doesn't need to be circumcised for salvation, but it is for the sake of acceptance by the Jews. And that's why I, I put at some cost. There's a cost. Our cost probably won't be as high as Timothy's, although some people cost with the pay of their life in terms of strengthening of churches. But uh, this is what happened to Timothy uh, for the sake of the gospel. They travel from town to town. They deliver the decisions reached by the apostles and elders from chapter 15 to obey. So trust in Jesus. Um, keep the food laws in terms of relation to blood because of Jewish fellowship and also um, issues to do with sexual um, behaviour, which would remind you as obedient to Jesus. And then verse 5, um, the churches are strengthened and grow daily. So the intention to strengthen the church, and I think an application for us here is, is that our intention to strengthen church, to strengthen, um, to, to go back um, to where we've already been, Sunday after Sunday, week by week, home group, home group, to strengthen one another, um, to encourage growth, and not so much for ourselves, but to strengthen one another. And when I say ourselves, not for me personally, I mean um, each other person there. And... Um, and then, then there might be some cost to that. There was a bit of Timothy, but it would it, be of some cost. We looked, talked about the cost of following Jesus last Sunday in Luke 14. Um, so you uh, you could go back to that just a little bit. Then um, verse 6 of, uh, to 10, I've titled this, Being Led by Jesus to Where Jesus Wants Them to Be. This is where the Acts of Jesus idea comes back. So, Paul and co, he's got uh, Timothy with him, they travel through Phrygia and Galatia. Again, if you look at the map, it's kind of Turkey, um, areas of what we call Turkey, and uh, they, they're kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word. Interesting. Why, why would that be? You see it again in verse 7, they come to um, the border of Mysia. They try to enter Bithynia. Again, look on the map. Uh, this is all Turkey, what we call um, areas of Turkey today, and the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they are trying. They are trying to preach, um, talk about Jesus, and just spread the message. But for some reason, and we're not told how, uh, and I think we're not told how because um, the detail isn't that important. Um, the, there might be equivalents for us today, um, but we're not sure what it would have been. Was there was there flooding on the road? Was there was a town in uh, suffering with? from pestilence were they in lockdown of some sort of situation you couldn't get in was there um were they not wanted 
um, were, were people opposed? Um, did um, was there illness? Were they a bit ill and they didn't have the strength to get in there? We, we just don't know. There's all kinds of reasons, practically speaking, as to how this might have happened. But, but the main thing, the main thing we are told is that Jesus is in control. He's 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 seeing that they can't go there. So they end up verse eight in Troas, which is by the sea, um, the in the tea, the, the the sea in Turkey base in Greece. And during that night, Paul has a vision of a man of Macedonia. Macedonia is northern Greece today, um, standing and begging him. This is a vision. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Come to us. We need help. We need salvation. And Paul sees the vision. They get ready to leave to Macedonia. Why? Concluding that God had called us to preach to them, the gospel to them. So I think that the point is, um, we would... Uh, they would have gone to these were places: Bithynia, Mysia, um, Phrygia, Galatia, trying to try to establish and strengthen churches. But actually, Jesus makes sure they don't get there because he wants them to get to Macedonia, to a new place across um, across the sea, to um, mainland Europe, to, to northern Greece, uh, to preach the gospel there as well. Jesus. Um, Jesus leads us to where he wants, uh, leads his people to where he wants them to be. Uh, how do we apply that to ourselves? It might be to do with, um, we try, we try, we try and uh, invite someone to, to a church thing, or we, we try and engage with them with um, the good news of Jesus, ask them how they are, try and pray about that. But the doors might not open, the opportunity might not be there uh, for all kinds of reasons. But if we keep trying and trying, we might eventually get to the people Jesus does call us to. To, to go to uh, and uh, the question is are we trying because if we're not trying we're not going to go anywhere and um, yes G, G, it's Jesus' mission it's not ours it's, it's Jesus' it's Jesus' work let's read on chapter chapter 16 verse 11 people who wouldn't have heard are ready to hear the gospel they receive Jesus so that's what happens Put, to, uh, Jesus has arranged all this so that they get there they put out by sea and there's some journey, you know, you can get the map out and put this on here. But anyway, they get to Philippi, which is a leading city, a Roman city, Roman colony, leading city of the district. So important city. They stay for several days and on the Sabbath, they try and find some Jews, uh, a place of prayer by the river. Now, it might be to do with washing ceremonially. Um, yeah, but don't worry about too much about the detail. They just know that there might be some 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 sort of Jewish believers there. And they begin to speak to the women who'd gathered there. One of them was from Thyatira, which actually is in Turkey, named Lydia. She's important, actually, because purple cloth was a, a sign of wealth. So she was sort of had some sort of wealthy business, in a sense. Uh, she's a worshipper of God, but not yet a believer in Jesus, in the sense that the Lord opens her heart to respond to Paul's message. So there is a, she, is, she is in need of something. She kind of is humble before God, but she needs to hear the gospel. And the Lord, this is Jesus at work, opens her heart. Uh, Paul doesn't open her heart, the, Jesus opens her heart to respond to the message that Paul is preaching. And um, she and the members of her household were baptised. It's her household. I and mean, uh, it gives light to the fact that women were marginalised. Now, there were some wealthy, important women um, who uh, were the head of the household um, back in the first century. So... Um, they were baptised and she invites them in and says, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, it's kind of humility there, come and stay at my house. And uh, they're persuaded she's a believer. She receives Jesus. And the thing is, this would not have happened if verses 6 to 10 had not happened, humanly speaking. Paul, Paul wouldn't have ended up in Philippi, Paul and co, if it hadn't been for what happened in verses 6 to 10. And the point is that Jesus wants them there because there are people ready to hear the gospel ready to believe, uh, the, the people who the Lord will open their heart to receive the message of Jesus. And um, and that's good, isn't it? That's great. So there's no opposition particularly here, although maybe it's implied a bit in some of these ideas of the Spirit from um, keeping them in, uh, from entering into certain places or going to certain places. But um, that, that'll, come, that'll come in the weeks ahead, as we mentioned uh, at the workshop. But and the main thing here, I think, is that the idea that this is Jesus' work uh, and this is uh, Jesus' mission to strengthen and to spread uh, the gospel. So Jesus fulfills his gospel plan using his messages of obedience. I might want to nuance that as like a bit because of the old obedience. I, I guess I'm thinking of the Timothy circumcision thing or submission might be a better thing. Or I suppose they're obediently, in verses 6 to 10, obediently trying to talk about Christ. 
uh, talk about Jesus, but receive and spread the gospel obediently as Jesus works. So actually, just just I mean, I, th- I suppose I'm saying to our, to, to St John's in Christchurch, um, let's let's seek to make Jesus known, because there are people ready to hear, um, something like that. So yeah. I'd explain those things step by step, perhaps, or at least um, a couple of those things. I mean, I will, I will in the service on Sunday, and we will go through this um, in a slot, all age slot. There's no communion this Sunday, so uh, kids are staying in groups right to the end, and um, we will cover this. We'll get, we'll talk this through just to unpack it about the gospel going to a new new place, and you might just want to re re recover that ground in group. Um, and um, focus on on Lydia a bit more, perhaps. Um, but you could get you could go through that again. And so, illustration: we we tell the story. I mean, it is a story. Tell the story. Um, there there might be all kinds of things that you could use to to get this across. The idea that there's um, lots of people just ready to ready to receive, ready to hear the gospel. Um, parable to sower kind of stuff, isn't it? Really, um, the soils ready to respond if any of the seed fell on them um applications um let me think about some application for us how about something to do with um yeah um the costs uh, of um strengthening um how about asking the question what will it cost help strengthen Churches, something like that, um, or let's, let's put some bullets in here. Um, what would it cost to help strengthen churches? Um, how about issues to do with? Um, are we? Um, how are we trying? Bit more of an open question. How are we trying to make Jesus known? Uh, um, yeah. Do we uh, do we stop at the first hurdle, or will we try um, someone some where else? Yeah, the idea of trying different places and seeing where the door will open, where Jesus will have us be. Um, yeah, are, are we doing that scattering? Um, I think being encouraged that there are people who Jesus will open their hearts to hear. So not everyone's going to hear and believe, but there will be some people who will. And Jesus has always gone ahead of us. Um, yeah, Jesus has gone ahead of us. And there's also the application to put ourselves into Lydia's situation. So um, maybe maybe you want to do that first. Yeah. Um, have we responded to the message? Re- responded to the message of Jesus. Excuse me. Um, the message of Jesus, like Lydia. Um, yeah, um, and, and maybe there's an invitation to be baptised. Being baptised? Confirmed? Something like that. Um, yeah, um, yeah, who can we tell, basically? Yeah. Maybe just praying for that, and you could do that on a weekly basis. Who can we tell? Who, who you'd say, All right, let, let's pray for somebody in group, somebody at school, or um, yeah, wherever it might be. Um, just thinking about the illustrations of this, I mean, I think this the idea tell the story, maybe use uh, the idea of um, something or someone ready to. Uh, here, um, I think I was thinking of an, uh, the example. which goes back to when I was um, when I was growing up, going to an RSPCA rescue centre and seeing all the animals, um, just waiting for an owner, and um, just being dead excited to see you as you walk past them, so, woof woof, and um, meow, and wanting wanting company and friendship, and just 
just ready for someone to, to take them in and help. There's lots of people who spiritually, even if they don't know it, are in that situation, just ready to hear about Jesus. Like, oh yeah, um, God loves me and God wants me to be with him forever um, and um, to look after me. That kind of idea. Um, maybe something like that. Um, to see it as a positive thing because we, we do think it's, it's, it's a hard thing. But actually there are people out there like Lydia. Um, yeah, um, I mean... I suppose um, the other illustration you could do is with the idea of um, trying, trying until you um, succeed. Put that in inverted commas. So just the idea that um, these guys they keep trying in different places, don't they? And it's a bit like that when we try and learn something at school. We keep we keep trying something, trying something, trying to tie our shoelaces, trying to ride our bike. Um, getting the balance of it until until we actually get there and keep trying because if you don't if you stop trying you won't you won't succeed that kind of idea um there's sort of persistence of it not not to give up um yeah um that kind of thing um what about an introduction how do we introduce this hmm you could just ask is do um yeah, something along the line of, do we really believe Jesus is for anyone? Because there is something of that going on in this passage, as they sort of, their, their sort of horizon is, is kind of taken further than they were thinking. Um, Jesus takes them beyond, over across the sea, to a new place. And um, we don't know what called to be to go to a new place, but maybe to people we wouldn't have thought of. Um, and that's part of the issue here, isn't it? They haven't thought of going to Philippi. They go there, and there is someone there ready to believe. And um, it, it could be um, people not like us, even people not like us. Um, something like that. And yeah. Um, so I'll put down here, even people not like us. Like that. Okay, so I will, I will email this out. I hope that gives you some framework. Um, what would be quite good, we said this at the workshop yesterday evening, um, they're, they're travelling around a lot in these chapters, chapters 16 to 20, and you might want to have a map, produce this sort of quite a big map, or hand-drawn is fine, and um, trace the journey. Um, and kind of get that continuity of story going across week after week and see what happens in different places because we'll see slightly different things happen but there is there are sort of recurring patterns in each place which would be good to to encourage each other and to see and to see perhaps in our own lives let me pray so lord jesus we thank you that you want the gospel to be heard and believed and received by any kind of person uh, you see that um paul uh, takes the gospel to a new place. You're the one who orchestrates that so that Lydia could believe it, uh, ready to receive. You opened her heart. And Lord, we pray that um, you would help us to see how this means, what this means for us today in our situation, where we perhaps we put up a barrier and say it's not for them, but actually we'd see that perhaps even you want us to go there in some way and tell them. Help us to work that out for the age groups we're with on Sunday. And may our church rejoice and persist in making you known. Um, in our in our families, in our friendships, in our workplaces, in our schools, and wherever it is we meet other people, may uh, your your gospel flourish, and uh, may you open people's hearts to receive the gospel. Amen.